How would you like to build and wield your own personal AI ecosystem? That is the tagline from the Fabric Project, which I've talked a bunch about. And in this video, I'm just going to show you step by step how to install the latest client. I'd made a video like this about a year ago when Fabric was written in Python. It's been since updated to Golang, which was less janky. And installation works great. And I'll walk you through the steps. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say Fabric, I've got a bunch of other content on it, including Fabric, your GRC risk assessment force multiplier, which has a backgrounder on what the project is. So there's this security researcher turned AI big thinker, Daniel Meisler, who made some really cool capabilities open source on GitHub. And he made a course about it. And he's talking to David Bombal on YouTube about it. And uh, he's got his own videos, which are really cool to check out. And one of the applications in GRC where I use this tool is for risk assessments, OK? So Daniel Meisler, being a security person, has a great essay called How to Make Threat Models, uh, something along those lines. And then he has his own custom prompt, which he calls a pattern, that does a really cool job in making threat models. You can do a stride threat model. You can do uh, you know, likelihood and impact matrix. There's more on that here. But that's for a different video and a different time. Right now, we're just showing you step by step how to install the client, all right? So I fired up a terminal on the right, and I've got my instructions on the left from the README in the GitHub Daniel Meisler Fabric project folder. And let's just go through it and show you it's not so bad to get running. And then I can't wait to see what you do with these capabilities. OK? So first, we're going to get the latest release binaries. I've already done that step on this instance, but maybe I'll just do it one more time and make sure it's good. All right, and then as it's working, we need to install Homebrew. Downloading and installing Homebrew. Get ready for the next step. What shall we do? Install Go. All right. Something a software developer friend taught me when I was having errors in Fabric uh, installation about a year ago was my, my error was uh, keystroke entry error. He's like, oh, yeah, you got to always copy and paste the instructions because it doesn't leave anything to chance. So that's what I'm doing over here. Not found brew. So I, yeah, I didn't take the last steps in the brew install. So I've got to do this. Run these commands in your terminal to add homebrew to your path. All right, let's try it again. OK, that worked. Let's take the next step and verify installation. Version 1.23.4. Awesome. So now we can install Fabric. It's going to go to GitHub and pull down the project. All right, that's done. Now we need to set some environment variables. Open up our text editor. And add these environment variables. All right. Control X, Y, and Enter. OK, that's done. Now we'll apply those changes. And we can run Fabric now. We'll know our installation was successful if this works. Amazing. It's working. It's alive, OK? So we've got the client installed. We need to add various API keys. So I'm going to use the OpenAI key, the Anthropic API key, and the YouTube API key. All right? 
So we'll start with OpenAI. And out of my password keeper, I'll paste this in. Let's do Anthropic next. And let's do YouTube next. Great. And then there are some things that are required. We got to do tools. We got to do 10 and set our default LLM that we're going to use for our, uh, our work with this tool. So let's do that. I'm going to use Claude 3 Opus because it's really good. Oh, wow. I've never used 3.5 Sonnet. Interesting. I think that might even be better what I'm used to, than what I'm used to using. Anyways, I'm going to do six because I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with that one. Enter model context length or leave empty to skipped. Okay. Patterns, download patterns, right. Enter the default Git repository URL for the patterns or leave empty. Yeah. While we're waiting for those patterns to download, let me show you where to find them so you can browse through the catalog and see what patterns would be helpful to your workflows. All right, so I'm in the patterns folder in the Fabric project, and there's a list of them here. And actually at the top, Analyze Incident is pretty cool. Where'd it go? Right there. So in a given one, hit the systemmd file, and you'll see what it does. So this one takes any data input. It could be a newspaper article, it could be a YouTube video, and it says, cybersecurity hack article analysis, efficient data extraction. Swiftly and effectively gather essential information from articles about cybersecurity breaches, prioritizing conciseness and order. Give us the attack data summary key details, right? So that's cool for getting quickly up to speed on a news item from a variety of sources. Let me show you another one. If I search for the word threat, this one's cool. If you take something like the Verizon Data Breach Investigations Report, which of course you're going to reach, read every page, but to get a quick summary of what's new and interesting out of a thick PDF, you could run it through this, okay? You are a super intelligent cybersecurity expert. You specialize in extracting the surprising, insightful, and interesting information from a cybersecurity threat report. So the AI will read the entire report, think deeply about it, what's new, what's interesting, make a one-sentence summary, give me a bullet list of the top 50 most insightful things, and, and some other cool outputs here. So give it a try, and you'll get a better idea of what this is all about. All right, now that the patterns have downloaded and you have an idea of what they are, we've got a few more steps to do. One is to fig add some more to our configuration file for our shell. So we're going to go into our... ZSHRC config file or ZSHRC, depending on where in the world you are. And we're going to add some aliases for all patterns and also enable the YouTube helper with an alias of YT instead of typing at YouTube. So maybe that's too in the weeds, but this is a vital step to perform. So let's just uh, add it so we can get up and running. Grabbing the text here. Adding it to our config file. Control X, Y, enter. Done. All right, so let's test this thing, make sure it's working. A cool pattern is analyzed paper. It's meant for academic research. Here's one from Dr. Gerald Osier, his PhD dissertation. Let's check it out. And it is lots of pages. What's our page count here? At least 131, okay. And let's try a pattern with it. 
So PV Paste is going to take what's on our clipboard if we're on a Mac and run it through the pattern called Analyze Paper and stream the results. Command A, copy, more than 138 pages, enter, and we'll see what happens. Let's try Sonnet. Very cool. Nice. All right. So I had some hiccups with the Opus model that I'd picked earlier, and they were resolved by changing the LLM to Sonnet. Um, the hiccups were both seemingly about token count, like how large the input was and how many tokens it would apply. Whatever this is about, right? It says, exceed your organization's rate limit of 40,000 input tokens. And then also, you know, it didn't do what the pattern said it was going to do, right? It just kind of listed a summary of key findings. That's not what the pattern says. Sonnet which is a more advanced LLM, seem to knock it out of the ballpark. So based on the research paper, here's my analysis. Small healthcare pr providers struggle with effective information security despite regulations and business motivations. Author, Gerald Osher. Organization, Dakota State University. Findings. Study details. Study quality. It was a qualitative grounded theory methodology with semi-structured interviews and theoretical sampling. Nine participants small healthcare providers in South Carolina, confidence intervals, p-value, not applicable for a qualitative study, methodology, clear documentation of methods, data collection, and analysis procedures. Well done, Dr. Osher. Detailed protocol provided, including interview guides and coding procedures. Awesome. Paper quality, novelty, 8 out of 10. Addresses understudied area of small healthcare provider security practices. Awesome. That's good. Rigor, 7 out of 10. Strong qualitative methodology, but limited sample size. Uh, okay. Empiricism, based on direct data collection from practitioners. Final score, A-. minus. Strong methodology and novel findings. Is an important understudied area with minor limitations in sample size. Very cool. So that's just a good example of consuming 138 plus pages and giving us a quick, concise summary and I haven't read this but, uh, at all, but I think I wouldn't be surprised if it's a fairly good match here. Okay. All right. It's time for test two. We're going to extract wisdom from a YouTube video. There's details on the extract wisdom pattern here. Our input will be a URL of a YouTube video. Copy that. I already have my config file open. So paste it in and let it rip. Gerald Osher discusses how to become a GRC analyst in 2025. Ideas. GRC analysts spend 60% of their time writing documentation, policies, procedures. Successful professionally to be comfortable with something. In ambiguous situations and balancing competing business security needs, risk assessment skills are the primary driver of high compensation for experienced GRC professionals. Risk is the heart and center of GRC. Insights. GRC bridges the critical gap between technical security teams and business stakeholders through effective communication. Quotes. Oh, I, this was used in his uh, SANS Podcast of the Year Award. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go as a group. Uh, good, that's a good one for Team SC. Habits. Continuously stay current with evolving security regulations and compliance requirements through regular study. Get on Discord. All right, I'll put this in the blog. Lots of cool references. Hey, there's me. And a one sentence takeaway. All right, so that seems to have done a pretty good job. Not just that our client works, but also demonstrating some capabilities you can apply to your workflows of consuming content and distilling down the insights. Now let's get wows per minute as one more test. We'll use uh, YouTube again with one of the most popular Simply Cyber YouTube videos. 
Entry level cyber. Okay. How many wows per minute are we going to get? Let's find out. Summary. Comprehensive overview of cybersecurity careers, focusing on entry level opportunities, salary ranges, job types, etc. Surprise per minute, seven. Surprise per minute explanation. Frequent revelations about salary ranges, job accessibility, and alternative position. Alternative paths into cyber provide consistent, surprising insights throughout the presentation. Novelty per minute, eight. Insights per minute, nine. Value per minute, nine. Very good. Wow per minute score, 8.2. Consistently high value content combining practical advice, industry insights, and actionable strategies, making it extremely valuable for cybersecurity career seekers. Awesome. Well, that's a cool demo of, uh, so we got the client working. We demoed some patterns. If you want to see more demos of patterns, I have some videos about that. They're about a year old, but you get the idea. And that's a wrap for this lesson. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.